G'day rugby players, welcome to the X Physio channel. Today I'm going to take you through a full speed and agility session that you can do by yourself down at your local field. In this session we're going to focus on change of direction, acceleration, moving laterally and getting yourself working like a rugby player should. By the time you finish watching this video you'll have a great idea about how I'm going to warm up, what exercises I can do, what drills I'll be doing, and also there's going to be a cheeky little bit of cardio in there at the end. I know it's not everyone's favorite, but it's important. So you'll have a full session that you can complete by yourself. If at any point in time, guys, you really enjoy the video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It just helps me grow and it means I can put out more content for you. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching. Let's get straight into that video. So let's start off with a warm up. We're going to begin with an A walk. So what I'm doing here is I'm raising my leg up. I'm keeping my ankle really stiff. You can see how solid my ankle is. That's the key here. And then I'm just striking down slowly, making sure my foot and heel lands underneath the body. Now, in an A march, I'm doing this much quicker, quite forcefully. I'm working on pushing down to the ground. An A switch is we're still walking, but I'm really trying to make sure that I'm switching in the air. So two feet are never on the ground at the same time. Only one leg is ever on the ground at the same time. So all those three exercises progress into this, which is an A skip. This is where my bottom leg is bouncing. I'm then switching over, still maintaining that strong ankle position. You can then extend out the number of hops if you really want to try to work on that ankle stiffness of the bottom leg. A B skip is very similar to an A skip, but you strike your leg out and around to really engage the hamstrings, which is obviously important when we're sprinting. We want to make sure they're nice and warm. So I always spend a bit of time doing those, plus this scissor run. You try to keep your knees as locked as possible, and you're dragging your foot on the ground, propelling yourself forward. May look a little bit silly, but it's a great way to warm your hamstrings. To ladders, I'm just doing some fast knees, just trying to make myself uh, work quickly here, get my feet moving, really just trying to work on that coordination for the agility drills that are going to come up soon. I'm doing a lateral one in one out, this is my favorite agility ladder drill, really good for anyone that's had ankle or knee injuries in the past. And now I'm doing a double foot shuffle but I'm moving laterally because I'm working side on to the ladder. Just another way to get your feet moving quickly and working laterally is just a different coordination exercise. Once I'm done that, I'm into my speed block. In this speed block, I kept it nice and simple, kept the volume low. So 20 meters of just two reps, 80% effort. I'm making sure I'm recovering with a good two to three minute rest in between each rep. It's really important that when you do speed work, you rest enough so that you're hitting top speeds every time you start to sprint in your main block. The main block for me was a 40 meter by two effort at 90% to about 95%. I'm not trying to lose form by sprinting at 100%. I'm really just trying to make sure that I'm hitting my top end speed at above 90% um, over the 40 meter distance. Uh, my last block when I did this was actually 60 meters by two reps at 90% to 95%. Um, I find that I take a little bit of time to hit my top speeds. So I like to give myself that little bit of extra distance. Now we're into the fun agility work block guys. So the key here is I have already decided what I want to do as far as my agility session. I want to work change of direction, 45 degree and 90 degree cuts. And I want some coordination in there because of my ankle and knee injuries that I've had. So I'm using the ladder with some of the four drills that I had in the warm up. So I've got fast knees, I'm cutting 45, cutting 45, and then two 90 degree change of directions at the end. I don't call this drill anything because I've just worked out that I want the drill to be about 20 meters long because after that I'm just going to gas out and I know what I want to get out of it. I want two 45 degree cuts and I want two 90 degree cuts. So having those parameters, I can then have a bit of fun and play around with what I want. So here I'm doing one in, one out. I'm doing more of a longer S-shaped run and I'm working on putting a move on on that last cone on a 45 degree cut. So I'm one in, one out. I'm getting around, out of the blocks, turning a corner, diagonally over to the blue, small turn and then I'm into a 45 degree cut and I'm trying to make my decision very late. This would be great if you had a partner to say, when you get to that um, halfway between the blue and the orange cone, they'll say left and then you head left. Um, so you're having to react. So this is just a, a, a rear from the back of that exact same drill, getting around the corner, making sure I'm turning tight on that blue, and then I'm putting a move on at the line um, just to see if I can practice those sort of game type situations. You can do whatever ladder skill you want to begin with, 
Um, it's just about you making sure you're getting your 45 degree cuts, you're getting your 90 degree changes of directions. Here is a pure lateral drill. So this is a great little NFL drill that I picked up. Got three cones, I'm working laterally in between each three cone and then I'm getting told which cone to go to, the left or the right, and then I have to straighten up and, and change that angle of attack that I'd have to do in a rugby game. So I'm not really trying to coach you guys here. I'm just trying to highlight that in games we do certain things and that I think it's worthwhile that we do practice those different moves, different um, techniques. And when we have things like ankle and knee injuries, we practice what we're going to do in the field because that's what the ankle or knee is going to be asked to do. Here is a W drill. I love W drills. It's a great way to work laterally. You have to face one direction and then pivot around. Make sure your heels don't click together. We're staying wide, really driving through the outside of our hip. I'm getting to that blue cone um, with a few positive steps. So when I get to that last orange cone, I'm turning and just taking a few positive steps to get out. If you're looking for inspiration for different types of speed drills, just make sure you have the qualities in your mind of what you're after. I would say 45 degree, 90 degree cuts. Uh, circle turns are really important in rugby, but also NFL videos are really class at working on these types of drills. So guys, into the last bit, which no one wants to do, but it is a cardio block. I kept this real simple. I put out 20 meter, 40 meter, and 60 meter shuttles, which is, if you're familiar, a Bronco rep. Each Bronco rep is 240 meters. I'm trying to improve my Bronco time. Currently, it's 5 minutes and 22 seconds. I'm trying to get it down to a 5-minute Bronco. So my goal here was sub 1-minute reps. And I was doing one minute on, one minute off as my work to rest ratio. So I did 57 seconds of work on average per rep. So then I was resting in between 57 seconds to a minute just to give my brain the mental break of doing the maths on the clock. Um, so 20 meters up, 20 meters back, 40 up, 40 back, 60 up, 60 back. That's 240 meters. That was one rep. So guys, what I want you to take away from this video is that you can plan a good session if you know what you're after. And if you don't know what you're after, obviously you can just try this session out. Everyone's fitness is gonna be a little bit different. So you might not wanna do six Bronco reps, you might just wanna do three, you might wanna do four. It really depends on where your fitness level is at. I have rugby programs on my website that does all the maths for you. You just put in your Bronco score and it will tell you how far you need to run. Um, I also have gym programs available on my website as well. What I want you to take away from this speed and agility is that you don't need to run 10 hundred meter sprints to get faster. You just need four to six good reps of a, of, you know, a reasonable distance to start to make sure that you're hitting your top speeds once or twice a week. You need to speed every six days or else you'll start to lose your top end speed. So that's crucial. We also wanna make sure that we're doing some change of direction to help to strengthen our coordination in regards to our uh, hips, knees and ankles, strengthening those muscles, not only in the gym, but on the field, which is what you're gonna do as a rugby player. And then of course we wanna be fit so that when we're changing direction and doing things, we're, we're fitter, meaning we're going to make better decisions, meaning we're going to put our body in better positions. So, guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you could, please support me, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know what you want to see next.